What happened was my son couldn't get this drug because the company was not going to develop it for Tourette syndrome. And a mother from California had called me because her son had terrible Tourette syndrome, and he was able to get this drug for, from Canada. Uh, but he had a friend going to Canada, and they asked the friend to bring back the drug. Customs Department confiscated it at the, uh, at the airport. And since he couldn't get the drug, the mother called me and said, what should I do? And I said, call your congressman. By the way, who is your congressman? And she said, Henry Waxman. And Henry Waxman is one of the most powerful people in Congress on issues that have to do with health. And uh, so she called her congressman. He said, I think this subject is important enough to hold a hearing. And he asked me, and he asked this uh, young man from California, and he asked Dr. Van Wert, who was dealing with uh, myoclonus, and a young woman who had myoclonus, to come down there and testify. This was June of 1980. And uh, we testified. I expected to walk into the room and there would be a lot of people from the drug industry sitting in the room. It was a huge hearing room. There was nobody in the audience. The industry said, they're making this up. We're not going to waste our time and go down. He had invited them to testify and they decided they weren't going to. But all the way in the back of the room was one person, a young man. And we testified at and at the end of it, I said to one of, uh, one of Waxman's uh, aides, what should we do now? What to expect? And he said, that's up to you. If you can get the public to demand a solution to this problem, we'll be able to do something. Well, I went home not realizing the following day in the Los Angeles Times, there was a small article printed about this young man who was sitting next to me. And at his problems of getting the drug. And it, I think the title of it was Youth Asks Lawmaker to Back Orphan Drugs. I think that was the title. And so that was in the Los Angeles Times. And then a couple of days later, I got, uh, I was working at the Tourette Syndrome Association at that time. And somebody said, uh, Abby, there's a man on the phone and he says, his name is Maurice Klugman, and he's the brother of Jack Klugman. And I said, yeah, <laughs> this, is, this is really going to be fun. Well, it turned out he was Maurice Klugman, and he was a producer of The Quincy Show. And he said, I think that my brother should make a show about this topic because this is not just entertainment. He should be using that show to teach people about health problems that... Uh, that arise in health policy things uh, that are important. And so, yes, he did a, pro a program about Tourette syndrome and orphan drugs. And at the end of the program, there was a notice that uh, even though the story was fictional, the orphan drug problem is real. And uh, if you'd like to help, uh, write to the show. Well, he got thousands and thousands and thousands of letters. He didn't even open them up. He just put them in big sacks and he sent them all to me. So here I was sitting with thousands and thousands of letters from people, many of whom had rare diseases and said, can you find help for me? But other people said, I don't have a rare disease, but I, I think it's terrible that people with rare diseases have no hope of ever getting treatment. And what can I do? So every time I opened up a letter, I kept a list of their name and, and address. And I knew that we, what we had there was a mailing list of people who were willing to write to the congressman to get the problem solved. And so uh, after another year, um, Mr. Waxman decided to hold another hearing. And by then, the pharmaceutical industry was totally embarrassed. <laughs> so they decided they would testify. And uh, Waxman asked Jack Klugman to come in and testify, and he did. And because he was going to be there, every congressman that was on the committee decided to be there. <laughs> and cameras there from all the TV stations, etc. cetera. And uh, so there was just overwhelming publicity for this. And then a little while later, his, his writer, one of, one of 
Klegman's writers would give me a call and say, what's happening? Is anything happening? And I said, really, things are not happening now. Things are totally at a standstill because there are some senators that are holding up the bill. And once a, a senator puts a hold on a bill, it's very hard to find out who he is. Mm-hmm. You know, what's the name of that settlement what, and what is his problem? Um, but uh, Klugman decided he would do another show about a senator holding up the orphan drug bill. And he said, what I want to do in this one is have a march on Washington. <laughs> and I said, well, I could probably get the, the patients for you, but they're not well enough to travel, and it's in the middle of the winter, and, and you know, to have them marching on Washington in the middle of winter, I don't. I think that a lot of people would get really sick if they had to do that. And he said, oh, no, don't worry about it. They don't have to go to Washington. There's a street in Pasadena that looks just like Washington. <laughs> Uh, so that's what happened. He had his march on Washington just for that show. It was on a street in Pasadena, but the th- thousands of patients showed up in wheelchairs, and, you know, I, I mean, crutches. It, it was just, they were so proud to be part of this. They really were. It was a great opportunity for them. And so that second show actually got the law passed because people were willing to write to, to their congressmen to make sure that there was no more stalling.